Hello, I'm Lawrence, a librarian for LA County Library. Today we'll be learning about a notable person in the field of STEAM, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Mathematics. Marion Diamond was a brilliant neuroscientist who helped pioneer many important concepts of modern neuroscience. We'll be learning about her achievements in the field of neurology and see what kind of cool brain games are available to stimulate your mind. To find out more about our virtual and live programming and explore our catalog and resources, please visit lacountylibrary.org. We're also on social media at LA County Library. For the latest library news and updates on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and more, follow us at LA County Library. And now, on to our program. Marion Diamond was born in 1926 in Glendale, California. Her father was a physician and her mother was a Latin high school teacher. Diamond grew up in La Crescenta and was interested in art from an early age. Her interest in art also helped pique her curiosity in the brain when she saw an illustration of the human head and neck in the famous medical textbook, Gray's Anatomy. Diamond went on to attend Glendale Community College and the University of California, Berkeley, where she obtained both her undergraduate and graduate degrees. She was also a trailblazer while working on her PhD in anatomy at Berkeley, being the first female graduate student in that academic department. Diamond developed a passion for teaching as a graduate student, and after receiving her doctorate, worked as a research assistant at Harvard University before becoming the first female science instructor at Cornell University, teaching human biology and comparative anatomy. Diamond returned to UC Berkeley in 1960 and continued teaching there as a professor for the rest of her career. It was at UC Berkeley where she made important scientific breakthroughs and contributions which helped define important concepts of modern neuroscience. As a researcher at UC Berkeley, Diamond produced the first scientific evidence of neuroplasticity that redefined how we view the human brain. Neuroplasticity is defined as the ability of the brain to form and reorganize synaptic connections, especially in response to learning or experience or following injury. What that means in simpler terms is that the brain has a capacity to reorganize itself when something changes, whether it is with the body itself or the surrounding environment. This was a radical idea at the time because the scientific consensus up to that point considered the brain to be of a static, unchangeable nature after birth. Diamond used lab rats to prove that environmental factors could in fact alter the brain's anatomy. Some rats were placed in environments with additional stimuli, such as different objects and challenges, while some were placed in environments without additional stimuli. Her findings revealed that no matter the rat's age, whether they were young or old, the ones in the environments with additional stimuli had developed thicker cerebral cortexes. This was an exciting development because a thicker cerebral cortex is correlated with an enhanced capacity for learning. And these results, published in 1964, helped shape the field of modern neuroscience. Diamond was also able to examine parts of Albert Einstein's brain, but only after continually requesting access to the brain for three years. Einstein's brain was in the possession of a pathologist from Princeton University who had performed Einstein's autopsy. According to Diamond, one of the main reasons for her request taking so long was not because of her credentials as a scientist, which were already impressive at that point, but because she was a woman. Diamond's request was finally granted in 1984, and she received a sample of Einstein's brain to analyze. She found that Einstein's brain had twice as many glial cells as an average male adult. Glial cells are believed to play roles in the brain's learning, development, and memory, which might be a key to explaining Einstein's aptitude for science and math. 
In 2000, Diamond conducted a study involving a group of older adults playing bridge. She had long suspected that brain activity could affect the body's immune system, and did so by measuring each participant's white blood cell levels before and after they played bridge. The study's results found that each time a participant played bridge, their white blood cell count was higher than it was before they played. The study implies that positive activity, such as playing bridge, helps stimulate the dorsolateral cortex, a part of our brain that may help influence the production of white blood cells in our bodies. What this means is that positive, stimulating activities may lead to healthier bodies. A win-win. Marion Diamond continued teaching throughout her life at UC Berkeley until she passed away in 2017. In addition to leaving an important legacy in neuroscience, her lectures on biology and human anatomy are also very popular on YouTube, being one of the most viewed college course videos on the streaming platform. So now that you've learned about Marion Diamond's research and the concept of neuroplasticity, here's an activity for you. Mental exercises are important for everyone of all ages, young and old. Neurological conditions such as dementia are serious healthcare concerns, and mental exercises are a way to help maintain brain function. Exercises such as brain games are a low cost, effective, and fun way to develop and maintain keeping the mind sharp. It's a much more challenging and stimulating activity for your brain than other less interactive activities, such as watching movies and TV shows. The best part is that the library has a ton of brain game materials in the collection that you can use to exercise your mind. Sudoku is a numbers puzzle that's been around since the late 19th century and has been popularized again in the last few decades. It involves filling up a 9x9 grid in which each column, row, and subgrid contain all the numbers 1 through 9 and it is easy to pick up, but difficult to master. Plenty of Sudoku puzzles and other brain games, such as crosswords and word searches, are available in the library's collection. You can check out books and other physical materials or digital copies from our collection to enjoy anywhere you are. For more cool science project ideas, be sure to check out our catalog at lacountylibrary.org. This concludes our video. Until next time, Thanks for watching.